Grab your marching boots, war gamers. The men of Bellamunda are going to war. We're running through a solo war gaming campaign using William Sylvester's The Solo War Gaming Guide, available at Amazon.com for the low, low price of, I think, 15 bucks is what I paid for this. And I've already gotten a lot of fun out of it. I'm working through how you organize a miniature war gaming campaign just as a, an intellectual exercise. In my last video, we created two nations, Sinistria and Dextromania. They have decided that it's time to go to war, and we determined, because Dextromania has a two-to-one advantage, that Dextromania is going to be the attacker. But there's a couple of other notes we need to make before we can go any further. And the first thing we need to understand is the timing of the situation. We need to know when these this campaign begins. So I got a D12, and this is going to tell us the month. It's going to be the first of the 10th month. So October 1, the festivities begin. October 1 in the year 1801. So 10-1-01 is when the festivities begin. And, you know, we can make up a little story about exactly what happened here, and that may lead to some decisions, but not necessary. We'll just say that uh, these two nations were organizing an alliance. Uh, the husband and wife, the, the Dextromania the prince, was going to marry the Sinistrian princess, and unfortunately they decided that they didn't want all of the pomp and ceremony, so they eloped. They ran off. And furious that Dexter, the king of Dextromania was furious that his his dowry was stolen by the perfidious princess. He has decided that he is going to launch a call it a punitive raid, if you will, or if he can't conquer Sinistria through merging of the bloodlines, he's going to do it at the point of bayonets. So he has mustered his army, or he has started to. Before we begin the mustering, we need to look at potential invasion routes by the Dextromen. Looking at the map, there's obviously three routes. Uh, they can rally their forces at the capital city, and we're going to call this... Um, what's a good word for... Since this is the right-hand country, we're going to call this Forthright City. They consider themselves a bunch of Boy Scouts and uh, think that uh, being forthright means we're just going to launch an invasion. But we don't know how they're going to do it. The question is, do we muster the forces here at this city, which only starts with four companies? Do we try to bring as many forces to bear up here? Do we try to muster them all at the capital, which starts with four regiments and a battery of artillery, or do we muster them here and launch an overland invasion to try to essentially cut Sinistria in half before they've had a chance to react? So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. Now this is, we're going to randomize this, and good old William Sylvester recommends what he calls the scammer, the SCMR, or the Solo Campaign Mobilization Rules. All of the troops are dispersed through the country, and then we have our three routes. One, two, and three, and we have to decide which it's going to be. So we roll a D6. Well, that, oh, excuse me. Then we have to figure out our comparable defensive strategies. So attack one, attack two, and attack three down this unimproved road. Our defensive strategies are going to be to bring everybody up to as many people to Leftopolis as possible. Well, wait a minute. Let's think about that. Do we concentrate the forces in Leftopolis? Do we concentrate the forces down here? So this is going to be defense one. Defense two is going to be to split the forces, send half up here and half down there. And defense three is going to be down to try and concentrate all of our forces down here. Now what this does is, it's a wonderful opportunity for you as the solo wargamer 
to put the strategic decision making into the hands of O Fortuna. It means you can't pick a side. It says sinister, that's just the Latin word for left hand. Now when I start pushing armies around on my maps, it's been left out of my hands. So that said, let's go ahead and roll. Our attackers are going to roll the blue die, and our defenders are going to roll the red. So there we go, and there we go. So on a 1-2, the attackers are going to muster all of their forces and attack via the northern route. They may leave a few forces down here, but this is the general gist of their attack. With a 1, 2, 3, 4, our defenders have decided to split and send two forces as follows. So now we have a grand strategic idea of what each of these forces are going to do. Things could have gone very differently. Probably a mistake when you're outnumbered two to one to divide your force. Might have been better to throw that haymaker around to the south southern route and challenge Forthright City. The good news is you are going to be able to challenge Forthright City if you can hold off long enough here. There's one last die roll we need to make to understand how this campaign begins. And that's determining who gets the jump on whom. Remember, our couple eloped in fine Princess Bride style. We have a lovely little chart here. Roll a d6. And the lower the number... Let's see, what do we got here? On a 1, did they mobilize at the same time? On a 2, the defender, the attacker gets the jump by 5 days. On a 3... By 10. Well, let's just roll and we'll compare. So on a 3, the defender mobilizes 10 days after the attacker. Okay. That is bad news bears. The Dextromanians have a full 10 days to get their forces in order and to get them all into the same place before they even start. The only good news is that the forces are scattered here and we're going to be able to concentrate quicker over this smaller area and along better routes of communication. One of the things we should have done prior to this is translate this map onto a hex map, each of these maps onto a hex map, so that we could actually calculate travel times. Since I don't have a hex map, we're going to do something a little different. At least at this stage of the game, we're just going to go with 1 inch equals 20 miles. Now, for those of you that are geography nerds, these are 8.5 by 11 pieces of paper, meaning these countries are each about 200 miles by 160 miles across, or 32,000 square miles. That gives you an area about the size of the state of North Carolina, or is it South Carolina? I just looked, I can't remember, one of the Carolinas, or for a more international flavor, it's the size of present-day Austria or Serbia. So, not aggressively large countries, but big enough in each case. So, where that leaves us is, we've got 10 days to reorganize these forces, and we're going to launch our invasion through here, and we're throwing everything we've got up through this way. I think it's a bit silly. I think they would have been smarter trying to defend the capital city. But once the capital, the border is crossed on that side, then we'll be able to start shuffling the militia around. Maybe bring some of these guys over to help defend or to give battle to the army group south of the Sinistrias. Getting a little ahead of ourselves for now, let's just figure out what we can do in 10 days. Running the numbers, what I found is that we can get everybody from here, here, from here and here, to our launch point by 10-7. If we wait until the 9th, we can bring in another couple of regiments of foot and another regiment of cavalry. So that's what we're going to do. Everybody else is going to get there on the 13th. 
So if we drop our order of battle, we're going to wind up with a 1-2 punch. So running the numbers... Oh, by the way, I added a bunch of swamp through here to explain why nobody travels between these two cities. So adding all this together, what we find is that our initial invasion group is going to be composed of five regiments of infantry, two regiments of cavalry, and two artillery batteries. They're going to cross the frontier on October 10th. A follow-on force is going to arrive on the 13th in this jumping-off point. And it's going to be composed of eight regiments of infantry, one regiment of cavalry, and two regiments of artillery. Now, to be honest with you, the important thing is that on the 9th, they're still going to be stuck here. So they're mustering right there, and that's going to give Dextromania a little bit of flexibility as far as making sure that they aren't leaving. You know, they may be able to, depending on how this evasion goes, they may be able to launch that force over here. But our clock starts on the 10th. That's when the move and counter move goes. They're planning on marching this way. They may get partially along there. But I, once this southern invasion route happens, but we'll have to run some additional numbers to figure out what happens with Sinistria. Now remember, they start moving on October 10th. A little awkward. After looking at this in a little bit more detail, it occurs to me that this Army Group 2 is going to have to follow suit. Because Army Group 1 is going to take a full three days to reach this village. In those three days, Army Group 2 is going to be... Let's see, they arrive here. Uh, they're going to arrive here on the 13th, so that's actually the 12th. They're going to arrive on the 14th here. So just a day, they're only a day or two behind, at least at this point. The other thing we need to figure out here is we've got a total of 4,500 infantry, 1,500 cavalry, and a couple of batteries of cannons that are hammering the walls of this sleepy little hamlet. So with a better than, what is that, 60 to 1 ratio, 6,000 to 100, how long are they going to be able to hold out? Well, hold on a second. Remember, we said that these guys crossed the frontier on the 10th, so they're going to dispatch messengers. Well, that we said, well, this is where things get really complicated. The nation of Sinistria starts to respond on the 10th, the day they cross the border. So they didn't believe there was going to be any invasion, thought it was just saber rattling, and then as soon as the army hit the border, that is when messengers went out. We also have to worry about how long it takes these commanders to reply, to respond. We need to figure out the garrison commanders, how responsible they are, because that is going to lead to an additional delay in the, the response. Well, it could. And again, we look to a, a table. Oh, we war gamers, we love our tables. We love our charts. And we have a chart here for our call to arms. So the word goes out, the messengers go out, they they knew that something was happening. They say, hey, you. it, it turns out it's really real. So we're going to add, on a roll of a two, a day. So these guys aren't going to start moving out until the 11th. And over here, these guys are going to delay two days. So it's going to be the 12th, oh that should be October 10th, before these guys get their act together. We've got three regiment of foot over here who are going to start immediately, and that's it. Oh no, we have to worry about the capital as well. The guys in the capital are going to start immediately. So unfortunately, as Army Group 1 starts marching, they're going to go, and they move 10 miles a day, which is a half an inch. So on the 10th, they arrive here. On the 11th, they're going to invest this area on the 12th. And finally, these guys start moving. Now, on an improved road, you move three quarters of an inch. So these two regiments of foot are going to be here on the 12th. 
The question we have is what to do with the army at Leftopolis. This one regiment of foot and cavalry and artillery, we said they're going to split, so they're going to hold tight. On the, well, on the 11th, so they, they uh, oh, i got to figure out one more thing. They spend the 12th marching to there. How many days does it take to level this city? And I think given the ratio, it's just a speed bump. We're going to call that one day. So on the 10th, 11th, the 12th, the 13th, and then, well, I tell you what, let's call it one or two days. On a one, two, or three, it's one day. So it takes one day. So on the 14th, and then it's going to be the 15th and the 16th. So Army Group 1 is going to arrive at Leftopolis on 1016, and that's when the battle is going to occur. Fortunately, that gives these two regiments of foot, uh, they move 15 miles, that's going to be the 13th, and on the 14th, they arrive in Leftopolis. So when the other issue is, these guys are going to set out on the 12th. And these guys set out on the 10th. So they move. Let's figure out where they're at on the 16th. Does that make sense? I think it does. On an unimproved road... They move 10 miles a day. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. And these guys also move 15. So if they're heading this way, that's on the 14th. And then they're down to unimproved roads. So, uh, oh, did I do that right? Yeah, this is still unimproved. So on the 14th, these guys all muster. And then they spend two days slogging down these roads. So... This is going to be the Army Group South. Army South. And what do we got here? We've got five regiments of foot. We've got one regiment of cavalry. And we've got one battery. I'm calling it a regiment, but it's really a battery of artillery. And that is on the 16th. Likewise, up here, we're going to wind up with uh, the Army Group North is going to have just three regiments of foot, one regiment of cavalry, and one artillery. And they're going to meet for battle on the 16th. They'll ride out and meet right here. So here's our first battle. And just like that, we have uh, Army Group 1 versus Army Group North. 311 versus 522. This is not a fair fight. We're going to play it out on the tabletop. It's okay that it's not a fair fight. We want to know how well they can defend the capital. If they can just delay... If they can escape along one of these routes, then it may buy time for this army to get over to here. Before we take, let's take a look at this real quick. It's going to be, it's uh, 30 miles. That's a lot of hiking they're going to have to do. This is a high risk. That's 30. This is another 200. They've got to go 230 miles along unimproved roads. They're not going to reach here until November See, 30 days, half September, October, and blah, 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 blah. October has 31 days. I know that because Halloween is on the 31st. I'm a very smart boy. Uh, so at 23 days, they're going to arrive here on November 8th. Their supply lines are going to be intact, so we don't have to worry about that. And they're going to be facing 300 militia when they get there depending on how things go up here. This army group might have to turn around and head the other direction. But that is a subject for another day. First, we have to fight this battle. The Solo Wargaming Guide is an invaluable tool for you solo wargamers. If you find yourself at home for some stupid reason, 
and not able to get down to the local game store, not able to get out, maybe you're on the road, this is a great intellectual exercise that can help you generate organic battles. We're going to have to figure out what this battlefield looks like. We know there's going to be a dirt road running through it, east to west. We know which direction the guys are coming from, but we'll have to uh, look through the rest of this solo wargaming guide and see if he can offer some assistance on setting up a a, a battlefield for us, the, the battle of the, the frontier. That's a video for another day. Until then, remember, I'm praying for you.